So today I'd like just to talk about some techniques that can be used to take a picture uh, from a background and put it onto a perhaps more interesting background. This particular picture is one that you may find of a young child that might be taken in a photography studio and it's on pretty much a white background. Uh, one thing that's easy to do to try to select this person from the background is to use your magic wand tool. Now the magic wand, when you select it, up above it shows you what the tolerance is, in other words, how many colors it may select from the color that you click on. If it's anti-alias, that, that tends to blend the colors together. Whether you want to select just a contiguous uh, color, in this case white, uh, which if you click that, it won't select some of the white inside the hair up here. And that's the difficult part of the selection. And of course, if you have layers, you might want to turn on sampling all layers. In this particular one, we don't. We just have a background. So using these uh, settings, if you click on the white, you notice it does a pretty good job uh, selecting um, the white background. One of the things you might want to be careful of um, are areas within the picture that you may not want to have selected. For example, you can see here that it has selected part of the glasses. And over on the other side, uh, it has selected a small part here, which you may not want as part of your selection if you're trying to move the child onto a different background. One quick way to remedy this is either use a lasso tool or you can just go into quick mask mode. Now here I've got my quick mask. If I double click on this little icon, I've selected a different color. Yours probably comes up um, as a reddish color. Uh, you can change that to any color you want. Uh, the default red is fine. Uh, you can leave it what you want. In this particular case, um, the masked areas um, are the areas that are not selected. If you toggle that to selected areas, then it just will, uh, will reverse it. But we can leave it the way it is. So if we want to uh, make sure that we don't have some of these white areas selected, we can simply take our paintbrush and with it on a black, you simply paint over and a good way to remember is black conceals and if you switch it to white it will reveal. So if I was to paint white it would reveal. So I don't want to do that obviously. So looking at this picture I'm pretty well satisfied so I'll go back into normal mode and I now have my selection. Uh, there are still some white areas up here in the hair that aren't selected but I'm satisfied that this is what I would want to do. Now, one thing to be careful of is you notice that I have the background selected, and I want to select the child. So, to select an inverse, I can go up to the Select menu and select Inverse, or I can use the Shift Control I to Shift Inverse. Notice now that I have the child selected, and the background is not selected. In this particular video, I want to move this child from the current picture onto this background, uh, which is more interesting. So if I hold down my shift key as I drag, it will drag and drop that onto the new background, creating a new layer. And because I held the shift key down, it centers it exactly where I would want it in that picture. Now you'll notice in this particular example, if I zoom in on the hair, there's still quite a bit of white that was selected along with this. And that is the difficulty in one of these types of selections, is how to get rid of or minimize some of that. And I'll show you a couple of techniques. So the first thing I want to do is to select my layer one and then drop down to this little window here, which will add a layer mask. Really, you can think of a layer mask as just a window, and because it's white, it doesn't do anything. You're looking at the complete picture uh, as it was uh, when we first brought it over, and it didn't have a layer mask. 
Now what I want to do is add a blending option. So I click on this little F down here and select blending options. And it brings up this rather large dialog box. What I want to do is to select a blending option for this particular um, picture. Now, one of the things I'll, I want to make sure before I do that is that I, I'm selected on my picture because that's where I want to add the blending option. So let's go back and uh, select that blending option window, and what I want to do is add an inner glow. Now, the default is yellow, and I don't really think I want to add a yellow inner glow here. So if I click on this little yellow box, it brings up yet another window, which is our color picker. If I go out into the picture, what I want to select is a color from the background that it's on. So I'll select a color here, and you'll notice that it's now has this kind of tan or buff colored selected. I'll click OK there. And what I want to do is go from my blend mode of screen and change that to normal and then move the opacity up to 100%. I can leave most of the other settings the same. Um, and what this does is it adds, if you'll notice here if I turn off preview, this is what it is without the inner glow, and if I click it on, you notice how a lot of it starts to blend in, and that's what I'm looking for. And of course, I can just click OK. Now, once I've got that in there, I would like still to get it better. So what I want to do is duplicate this letter, and I'll select the layer, and then press Control J. And you notice now I have a layer one copy right above it. I want to go back to this layer, select, click on the white box, and I want to fill that with my foreground color, which is black. Now, by doing so, that is hiding any effect from my first layer, and I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Let's select now our second layer, and let's go into the Blend Mode Options box again where we've got our inner glow already applied. What I want to do now is to use these blend if sliders down below. And you notice you can drag the top one, which is this layer, to the left. And if you'll watch up here in this particular area of the screen, as I drag to the left, a lot of the white disappears. Now, the thing you have to be careful of if you'll watch the face, if you go too far, pretty soon you're blending the entire layer into the background and you don't want that. So you need to slide it back to the right to where you get enough of the white pixels blended in, but not so much that the face uh, starts to blend in as well. And when you've got that and are happy with it, click OK. So now you've got your picture, but you might notice down here alongside the face, there's a few areas that did start to blend in, and that's why I created this layer below. So let's go down and fix that up. I'll select the layer one, the black box now, and uh, what I want to do now is paint with white, because white reveals. And so what I want to do is reveal the original picture. And so if I paint here on the layer, not on the picture, but on the layer, and just paint across the face, any areas that went a little bit too far will come back the way they were. Now, I notice there's some here on the glasses, and you could think, well, I want to get rid of that too. And you could paint that away, but you notice it comes back white, and I think I prefer that the way it is uh, reflecting the background. And so by doing that, you notice that we've now made a significant improvement to the picture.